hit in cool places like Tel Aviv. Great software. Seriously, that's all you got? Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Do we want to back into that? You can use DNA. Boy, those robots look cool performing. Today, I will be speaking, I work at some company, we do some work, that's less important. I will talk about object-oriented Ruby, or Ruby I call it. Why do I want to talk to you about this? I can see a lot of people breaking an encapsulation. They are in love with functional programming, and then they write some strange code. I don't know why. I don't know wh how they get there. They don't learn what they can do with Ruby. There is a lot they can do. And they are amazed with this functional programming because as we already know from Polo, we need functional programming. But in Ruby, it doesn't change a lot because Ruby itself, it runs in one thread. So functional programming gives you almost nothing. Why do we break encapsulation? Why do we don't use inheritance? These are things that can help you, that can make your code a lot better without going into other prodigram, prodigrams. And forcing immutability. You are in just one thread. You cannot change anything. Everything will be working. So. What is encapsulation for me? And I have this amazing example. I was thinking really, really long about what to show. What will be this best example? You recognize it. It's a calculator. Everybody has seen one, probably. You pro might have some. Or you have some, probably, more advanced version your computer. What's amazing about calculator is it has input. So the buttons are its input. Whatever you press buttons, you tell it to do something. And it has some output, so you can see the results. And then you got some documentation. Probably nobody read it, reads it, because we already know how to use it, because it's so obvious. But this is the best example of encapsulation for me. You get some input, output, and you don't care what's inside. You just use it. You put the information inside, and of course some people can, can hack it. So if you know how to change the calculator, you probably could use iron... Uh, it's iron? Soldering iron. Exactly. And you could change it. But the problem is most people don't know how to change it properly. And you could end with something like this. Like, what's that? This happens when you mess with things, you mess with encapsulation. If you want to change the calculator, you probably would end up with something like this. Actually, my room looked similar for a short time. <laughs> but this is what, what you end up if you break encapsulation. So my idea of object-oriented isn't this strict idea w that you get in C++ or Java. I think very openly about it. And mixings, for me, are part of it. Because in Ruby, you can use patterns and with mixings, you can easily extend your objects. And you can see the stuff is repeating. You are doing the same, the same, the same, again and again. And when should you use mixings? I have some examples. So in the first example, you can see we have some instance variable. We do some computation, and we set instance variable. And that's probably right if you use it in your application, you are the sole developer. But 
what happens if there is another developer? What if they have the same variables? And maybe the config isn't a hash anymore, or maybe an array. What, what if the file name is an object, not a string? Will it work? So this is an example how not to do mixings, because this way you will hurt yourself. It's just waiting for somebody else to use the same variables in different way. And in this example, we are producing simple function that has input, output, and doesn't have side effects. This is already applying these rules of object-oriented, of encapsulation. You mixing is encapsulated. It doesn't change anything. What you put in, you know what will go out. And sometimes you would think, ah, oh, why not? It's just one variable. But the type, types can change. And you can get different results. Instead of maybe a year, you will get something else. This is where composition comes in. And you know how the universe is built. We have these huge galaxies. And we have some planets. Some animals live on those planets, probably. <laughs> and of course, you can go deep, deep below to some atom level. So you are building from smaller, smaller, sm small parts, and you go bigger. And we can think about those things. So you can see, you take atoms, you build animals, those animals together, you get a planet, and then the whole galaxy. So you can think on different levels. This is where composition comes in. And this is a huge example. I'm really happy with this big screen. I was showing this presentation on small screen. And it was not readable. So you can see here, we have a barber. And you probably see the mistake somewhere there. Who sees the mistake? Hands up if you see the problem with this code. Oh, some of you notice it. So you can see there is a color assigned to name. Of course, this will produce some strange results because we allowed it. And excuse those examples, they aren't perfect. But on the next slide, I'm trying to fix it. So I'm intro introducing her. So we can only change the color this way. And then when we have a barber, we can dye a hair. So we pass only hair and only color. So there is no option to change something else. This is where composition comes in. And of course, I want to talk about inheritance because it's really hard topic. You have to be able to think about it properly. And s a lot of people discourage you from using it because it can be misused and it will hurt you. That's why we need to experiment, experiment and see what it brings us. So inheritance for me is like liars. You build functionality on top, on top, on top, and you extend it. And you get more and more functionalities. But you have to be careful with that. Let's see another example. So we got, we got a person. And it has some strength. And it can throw items. So the distance, how far you throw, is some calculation. And of course, for me, the possibility is superhuman or super person, if you try. And the strength is, of course, bigger. And then they can fly, of course. Strength times time, it's the distance, how long you fly. Sorry, too far. Is it? Yeah. So 
we have to be careful because it has to be kind of. So we know that the superhuman is kind of person, but if it would be a car, we couldn't compare them. Inheritance wouldn't fit there. You probably would like to use composition or mixings in that case. <coughs> And what's next? Next, I want to work on other topics like types in Ruby. There is a lot of place for that, and it could help us, uh, help us, but not necessary. It's easy. Of course, I want to talk, uh, find out how to use functional programming properly with Ruby, because there is a lot of approaches, and some of them are working, but then you hit limits of object space, how much ob objects you can have, the garbage collector doesn't work fast enough. And of course, next most important thing that uh, will help you to think about those things will be Nick stock, which is next. And in summary, I wrote a blog post that it reiterates about this topic, so you can read it. And make sure you use mixings properly, only encapsulated, so you have any side effects, uh, effects in mixings, because that will easily get misused or introduce errors. Then we have composition, which is really great to make sure nothing wrong happens. And inheritance, which when th there is a kind of, it works for you. Yeah. That will be it. You can find me on Twitter, GitHub. This guy with blue hair.